In this video, we'll take a look at the enhanced version of Defender for Cloud with a focus on regulatory compliance. If your business has a regulatory compliance need, Defender for Cloud can help you achieve that compliance. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Azure. So now we'll look at some of the enhanced or paid features of Defender for Cloud. That includes uh, regulatory compliance, as well as individual features for different types of resources. There's Defender for servers, Defender for containers, Defender for storage, you know, for maybe a dozen different types of resources. There's individual Defender plans that have individual features. So we'll take a look at the, uh, the regulatory compliance, kind of the general, uh, the biggest feature of Defender for Cloud with the enhanced version, as well as the, the pricing model and some of the other features here. So we're already in the Defender for Cloud portal here. The first thing we'll look at um, is just kind of that general service. What are the other paid features or enhanced features for Defender for Cloud? And so we can do that by going to environment settings. Uh, if you have a bunch of management groups, um, you'll need to kind of expand out all of your management groups where your subscription is. Uh, so here's my demo subscription here. And the first page that it brings us to is the, the different Defender plans. So just the cloud security posture management, you know, that basic tool is free. Um, doesn't have any other uh, paid requirements there. And then for the different resource types, there are these various plans that have their own features, their own capabilities, um, as well as you have to be using one of these to get that regulatory compliance feature as well. So there's Defender for Servers, Defender for App Services, Databases, et cetera, et cetera, for, for each of these resource types. Um, and again, the, the pricing model is then dependent on that resource. Now, uh, one of the interesting things about Defender for Cloud is that this the, the pricing model kind of forces you to have a really good governance strategy for placing your resources. Because the, the way the pricing works is that for this specific type of resource, you know, say Defender for Servers, uh, I have eight servers deployed in this specific subscription, and the the pricing model is fifteen dollars per server per month, and that is on the subscription at the subscription level. Um, I cannot go in and change this to say, well, I only want Defender for Servers enabled for this resource group or this group of production servers and not my dev servers. The, the enablement here is at the subscription level. And so if you don't have a good governance strategy or a good management strategy to say you have different subscriptions for different types of environments, you know, maybe a, a subscription just for production, a subscription for dev test or QA or staging or you know any other type of environment that you might have, if you've got everything in one subscription and you've got four or five different environment types, and then this number uh, is you know 40 instead of eight, then you're gonna be paying for Defender for Servers for all 40 VMs, and there's no way around that. So having a, a good governance strategy is um, pretty critical to using Defender for Cloud um, efficiently without like overpaying or paying for VMs that maybe you're gonna Kind of spin up, they're only going to live there for two weeks while you test something or develop something, and then you delete the VM. And that goes the same for, you know, containers, databases, all these other things as well. So with um, the, the enhanced versions that we have on here, uh, Defender for servers, app services, etc., have these on. And so then that gives us the ability to use um, regulatory compliance. So if I go back to Defender for Cloud and then go to Regulatory Compliance, this is one of the enhanced versions. You have to have one of those things on. And so this gives us um, kind of the same idea of the recommendations, except with a compliance lens. So you'll see here the first tab is that Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. These are just the those general control categories around the existing configuration of resources. Um, here's network security recommendations. Here's identity management recommendations. Those are all going to be pretty much the same that we see in the, the regular recommendations tab. What regulatory compliance allows us to do is add in other compliance policies that maybe we need to achieve. This could be 
uh, ISO standards, PCI compliance, if we're in healthcare, HIPAA high trust, um, SOC TSP. There's a dozen plus different compliance policies that we can add into our subscription. And then it does the same idea. It'll go out and look at the current configuration of the resources we have deployed, measure that against what's defined in that regulatory compliance policy. And so if we're in uh, retail or you know anyone that's going to accept a, a credit card processing or perform credit card processing, then we have to be PCI compliant. And so the, the PCI compliance here takes the control categories that are defined in that standard and compares our current resource deployment and configuration against what's defined. So here, just expanding the first one, uh, we have to have a firewall configuration to protect any of the cardholder data. Uh, 1.2 is around firewall, inbound, outbound traffic. And so here we have eight resources that are failing this security control. And so we could uh, you know, drill into this specific resource. Maybe we have some Windows VMs that it looks like the, the outbound firewall you know, isn't completely blocked. It's set to allow, which is a default. Uh, and so it gives us the, the list of machines that um, are not following this recommendation, right? And so here's the query that it runs. Here's all of uh, the eight machines that it's coming back with that apparently don't have this firewall configured the way that PCI says that the firewall needs to be configured as. And so we can, it's just kind of that idea for all of the different security controls uh, within PCI compliance just for this example. Uh, and then that's the case for all of the other um, regulatory compliances that we could add in as well. They're based on, um, it gives you that, that lens of how the environment's currently configured based on the, the security controls that are defined in the compliance that you add. And so this really helps for, you know, not only, obviously it can be a lot of work to go in and, and remediate all these things and get to that level of compliance, uh, but if you're doing either internal audits or third-party audits, this gives you uh, this can save you so much time in generating that first report. Or you know, if you do this once a year, um, generating the reporting that you need to work with either your internal or third-party independent auditors. Because with this, and the HIPAA one is actually pretty green here, um, we go in and, and enable this and configure this. We have this download report button. And so here we can select this standard. We have this added. So uh, what was the one we were working with? PCI 3.2.1. Uh, we can download a PDF. You know, now if I'm working with a third-party auditor, I can hand them this PDF file. You know, here's my PCI compliance report from Azure. And this is customized specific to my subscription. It has all of the... Uh, the security controls that are defined in the, the PCI 3.2 standard, it gives us uh, essentially a printout of all of those things. Now, of course, hopefully if we're doing an audit, most of these are all green and not red. Um, but this saves you, you know, so much time to be able to just hand this report to your auditor and then, you know, okay, come back with questions that you have or what else you want to see, right? Like it'll, if you've got everything green and everything's passing these assessments, um, you know, your, your third party or your independent audit should be that much easier. So that's one of the, the biggest features or capabilities with the enhanced version of Defender for Cloud um, is if, if you're in a regulatory environment and you need, uh, you're working with auditors to, to prove the, env the environment is secure and, and meets the compliance for, for what you're trying to meet, this saves you so much time. If you learned something new today, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel to learn more. I stream every Friday afternoon on Twitch if you'd like to come by and ask questions. Uh, thanks for watching.